I'm going to practice the amazing art of plugging in an HDMI cable with one hand. No drum rolls necessary. I can probably manage that. Excellent. So, folks, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dave Clark. I'm currently a software engineer with the Iconic, and we make lots of exciting things. But tonight, I'm not going to talk about something that we built with the Iconic. I'm actually hoping to go on a little bit of a journey talking about prototyping and getting back to some of the points that Saza had mentioned earlier, right? So talking about PHP being a great language to start learning how to program with. It's very forgiving. It's very easy to get up and running. The barriers are very, very low to actually being able to say, hey, look what I did, right? And I think for me, that was one of the reasons why I fell in love with PHP early. Does it have its quirks? Of course, we know that inconsistently or consistently inconsistent, whichever way you want to look at it. It's a, a language which is, of course, extremely popular. And when I was talking, uh, pulling the, the little blurb together for tonight, I was suggesting it might be interesting to look at using PHP, not just for web applications, which I think most people have ended up coming into contact with PHP because they've been working with something like WordPress for the first time. Talking with a chap tonight who you know is very new to software engineering and software development, and you know the first thing that he's touching is actually really quite a confusing code base, which is a mishmash of WordPress and a whole stack of procedural PHP. If some of these phrases are, are new to you, then you know don't worry. This talk's also for you as well because I'm going to talk through a few things which are not necessarily going into the internals of PHP, but just talking a little bit of a higher level. So when, when I'm talking about prototyping, most folks are probably familiar with what a prototype is. It's the first version of something that you're building, right? It's an activity which is typically very valuable if you do it right, because what it's teaching you is not just how to build something, but how not to build something, right? So it's a, a journey that you go on when ideally you've got a goal in mind, going to build something, and you try to get to that end goal nice and quickly in a way that's not going to overburden you when you're trying to deliver that. You want to get it out there, understand whether what it is that you're building is actually valuable. And how do we measure value? First of all, people kind of have to use it, right? Most of the time, right? So get it out there, people can start using it, you work out whether it's valuable, and then you can start getting into whether or not you're going to do a little bit more with it. How are you going to take it to the next level? So I wanted to share a little bit of a, a personal story. I won't go too deep into it, but last year made quite a big decision. My um, wife and I decided we were going to start homeschooling our son, right? So it was quite a, a big change from where we were at at that point. And so when we, we decided we were going to do that, we also thought to ourselves, well, you know, we're going to be investing a lot of time into learning how to actually do the homeschooling thing and find ways of passing on this information that we need to pass on and want to pass on in an effective way. And we ended up using some of our skills to come up with a couple of concepts for things that we might want to actually put out there and provide you know, to the homeschooling community. So one, one of those ideas was to pull together a game that might help somehow with learning how to spell. Right? So how do you engage somebody to help them learn more about spelling when they're really not that interested in the topic, but you know that it's going to be valuable for them? And, you know, game seemed like a, a good way to go. Now, I'm very much known as being somebody who's into PHP within the community here, but you know, like most developers who've been developing for a while, there's a number of different skills that come into being you know, a, a developer who is able to work across a wide variety of projects. So you end up picking up bits of other languages. From PHP, a lot of people end up moving into the likes of JavaScript, perhaps some more you know, serious backend scripting and things like that. And for, for me, I, I actually decided to go on a bit of a learning journey myself. I thought, right, if I'm going to start building a game, where, where do you start with building a game? And so I decided I would try to learn one of the popular gaming en engines, which is called Unity. Has anybody actually had any experience playing with Unity, maybe having a go with it? Yeah. One of the things that had attracted me to looking at Unity, because there are quite a few different gaming engines out there, 
you can start working with was the fact that it seemed like there was a lot of stuff out of the box that Unity was providing that would lend itself well to a deeper immersive experience. There was a lot of support for different devices where you could start getting into things like augmented reality and doing a whole stack of interesting stuff. Now, I was getting the emails from them telling me all this wonderful stuff. I'm kind of been newbie at all that sort of stuff, but I thought, you know, this seems like a good way to go. So anyway, fast forward a few weeks and we started to think through how are we actually going to build this game? And I think it's probably better at this point because my voice has a wonderful lilting effect that might help to to sleep if you have insomnia. I'm going to bring something up on the screen that actually doesn't look particularly attractive, but in a moment should actually look a little bit more. So if anybody has ever worked with Unity, and I know a few of you have, then there's some quite interesting approaches to you know, object-oriented programming in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up this What's here. Up with this one, that? What's that mean? Unity crashing. Unity crashing, oh yeah. Now in this case here, it was the IDE yeah. called Mono Develop for it yeah, that was crashing out there. <laughs> What I'm going to do, it looks like the, the audio is connected. If this is too loud, I apologize in advance. But anyway, this was the, the idea. It isn't finished, right? But the idea would be that you start off here and you navigate and pick the planet that you want to visit. And when you visit the planet, then the game would launch. And you would be in this wonderfully cinematic experience as you zoom around. Spell the word bed. Oh, bed. Example, it is almost time for bed. <laughs> Who wants to learn how to spell that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, maybe, maybe. I have had enough of that. Okay. So the idea would be that you would go through these different rounds. If of course you make a mistake, one. then you make a mistake. Example. And you go. There is only a one. There's several one rounds. Time. You can hear Spell all the, the audio word. here. Will. I. Example. Will you be coming to the party? Spell the word is. Is I'm sure it's not all. That is my favorite thing to do. Okay. Well done. Some of those words were a little tough. You are doing well, so keep practicing. Now that feels completely natural, doesn't it? With all that wonderful audio there, it doesn't sound like a robot at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is this is actually one of the things I wanted to touch on. So when you're thinking about a prototype, right? When you're thinking about a prototype, you're not thinking about perfect, right? What this was was just something that was a little bit of an experiment, something that was going to help us very quickly realize, is this actually fun or engaging anyway? Did you have a question? Yes, what they call the MVP. Right? Exactly. So that, what's going to be the very basic thing that gets across the idea of this game? We can test, measure, understand that people actually even want to pick it up and play. I still find myself occasionally going, oh, this is, this is fun. You know, I'm learning how to spell. <sighs> If anybody's ever looked at any of my pull requests, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so that that for 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 an MVP, something basic to get across the concept, was quite effective. It was something that you know we could learn from quickly. It's not perfect, definitely not. But I thought you might be interested to know that we had some, as you would with any product, we had some considerations to make about how we were going to actually do this. There's one thing they, hey, we're going to make a game. This is the idea. This is how it's going to be. It's another thing entirely to actually start bringing that to life. There's challenges you need to work through. You need to think through what are the challenges? How are we going to make this actually, actually come together? So what can you pick out from what we just saw a moment ago? So we, we watched something. We heard an introduction to each round, if you like, right? Saying, OK, spell the word whatever the word was, and then there was an example, right? So in terms of structure and repetition, there's something right away that you can pick out as something that you're going to have to be able to produce. Some of that stuff is going to be the responsibility of the gaming engine to make things happen at the right time, but nothing's going to happen unless you've got that raw material prepped and ready to go. So all of that audio, how did we do it? Has anybody got any guesses about how we might have done that? That audio? <coughs> this is absolute basics. Terminal C. Perfect. Terminal C. So what is terminal C? So with Mac, <coughs> right under the box, we've got C. Why the delay? So there we are. It's there. So 
I just oh. like to say when when you do something oh, with Sarah, it takes forever. Yeah. Just always do like um, run your commands and then do the colon and say say done. Well, I, I always do that when I put Sarah. That's a great tip. Thank you very much. I wish it had you over my shoulder <laughs> when I was doing that. That would be great. Thank you, man. Cheers. So you were saying put a you were saying put a semicolon at the end of it and then done. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah. Wrong. Long running command. Yeah, a long run ago. Okay. Yeah, 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 cool. All right, so from that point of view, say, right? It's a function which is being bundled with this thing. You might think, okay, but you must have taken a long time typing all that stuff out over and over again. I would have if I hadn't thought to myself, hey, I could build a very simple project and then I'd be able to go from there. So let me just jump in there. And I can see people laughing at what's on my screen, so I'm going to... No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> clear, oh, clear, 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 clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to point out naming and shaming that Carrie thought it'd be fun. It's gone. It's gone, it's gone. Yeah, Carrie thought it'd be fun to play with my machine before uh, when I was doing my state. So. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so how, how do we do this, right? So I thought to myself, there's a structure here. You've got these key phrases, right? Got these key phrases and things like you know when you finish a, a round. I'm gonna have to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Okay, so just for those who can't see the screen so well, we've got an array up here. The key is congratulations, level up, and we've got some text here. Well done, you have unlocked a new level. Great spelling. When I was working through the example, you'll notice I made a, quite a few mistakes, right? When I made those mistakes, I got a message at the back there that was saying, "Hey, well done." Few of those words were a little bit tough. Oh, was this, some of those words were a little tough. You're doing well, so keep practicing, right? So trying to get that, that positive message there continuing on. Now, this little project that I put together was just designed to help produce that audio. So if we were to follow the flow through here, what we end up actually doing is working through each one of those key phrases and we write the commands into a file. When I say we write the commands into a file, let's just go into the output folder, and what you'll see is that there's actually four phrases in here, okay, perfectly matching back to the array we had a moment ago, and what it's doing is it's using the say command in order to produce the audio, but have it saved out as a, you know, like a, an MP3 type file, you know, in a WAV file. Right. So if you look through, you'll see that what we actually do is push that out, and then when it's actually run, then we end up with the audio going into the audio folder. So in terms of thinking about how PHP can be used, and not just thinking about it in terms of the idea of a web application, then this is how scripting, and scripting with good sort of Pulling apart the bigger picture into smaller pieces, we've got key phrases there, we've got the individual letters of the alphabet, we've got some words. Now, when it came to those words, we were thinking about the fact that with most games, you're going to have kids who are working through different developmental stages, they're going to be keen on one word list to start with, perhaps, you know, as they work on to the next. So we researched what were the right kinds of words to be using for different groups. And so then we were able to actually produce, using these scripts, then the phrases and also the, the letters for each of those. So the list there, there's the individual words, and then they've got a matching phrase, something that would help people to get the context. Because you know what it's like, right? Even with the best will in the world, some of these different audio engines can mean that it's hard to understand what was said. Just like when you're talking with someone else, if they've got a particularly strong accent, <coughs> then it can sometimes be a little bit challenging to understand what they've said. Hopefully it's easier for you to understand me though, than it would be if I was back in Edinburgh or Glasgow. Okay, so that's one example that I wanted to share. And I'm going to not talk for, for too much longer, I just wanted to really share it and go through it a little bit more. But another thing, just capturing a little bit of fun that you can have with PHP, right? Most of the projects that I do where I require a front end these days, and more often than not, 
ending up using a front end framework like Vue.js, like Vue.js Vue version two or above. And another people out there who are using tools like React and things like that. Well, when we recently moved, we moved to somewhere where we could actually see the train station that was next to where we were, and we'd see the trains coming in, and we thought to ourselves, this would be kind of good fun to be able to tell what's the next train that's coming through here in both directions, what's the next train that's coming, when's it coming? So I uh, started off with a very quick prototype using Vue.js, and went to, uh, has anybody used the 131500 website to plan your trip or something like that? I'm not sure about that. Yeah, what's, oh yeah, thanks for that. So it's Transport New South Wales now for anybody who's wondering how to help to get to it. And so you put in your journey information. If you look at what's happening with the network connections and where it's talking to, you can actually see what the API calls are that are being called to get the information. So I thought, okay, you know, this is fun. I'll be able to just do the same here and start you know, getting the data into my application. And so that's what I did. But then I was, I was finding that when I was trying to make the call from the Vue.js application, that I was running into a problem, which was to do with the whole cross origin requests side of things. Now, yeah, exactly, the whole course thing. Right? So because of that, I thought to myself, well, what am I going to do about this? And I thought, ah, stuff it. I'll just make some very quick PHP scripts. I'll just make it so that they make the call on the back end, and so essentially use them as little proxies. And if you don't know, uh, this is the thing, it's, it's, not, um, it's not rocket science, but if you've never done it before, it's the sort of thing where you might not know what I'm talking about and, and why and how it would end up looking. Now, this is, of course, very quickly thrown together, but you can see here just a simple PHP script where I'm saying with these headers here, I want to allow access across all origins, and the content type is application JSON. And then I'm just using a simple echo biomic contents. Of course, there are things that could go wrong, but I really didn't care because it's so it's just me, me doing stuff at home for fun quickly. Again, coming back to the spirit of prototyping, right? You just quickly throw something together and you know you try and, and get it up and running. So this helped me get past the problem, right? It's not the best code in the world. It's not object-oriented over the top, built with a framework, it's just a few lines, okay? So echo file get contents. And then a massive long query here to get the, the relevant data back from the API. If I was to show you what it looks like in terms of a, a response payload, all that JSON that we're scrolling up through just now, that's what a response from one of those things would look like. So in, in the initial stages when I was developing it, what I would do is actually take the JSON that I would get from the API, calling the API directly, and then just put the JSON, like assign it back to a property and, and you know, use that for mocking up how I wanted it to look. But these are the, the sorts of things which PHP affords us, you know, the, this great luxury of being able to get up and running very, very quickly. And, you know, I wanted to share a little bit about some of the, the fun things I've done in the last little while. Anybody got any questions so far? Anything you want to talk about or add to that? Any fun things you've done with prototyping you want to share? I'll just say a quick one that I did. I got sick do, of... Do you want to come up and... So, at our company, we have one of our repos has probably... It's a WordPress repo, yes. I don't know. But it has a bunch of JavaScript products inside, projects inside. And basically, there's like 10 of them. And the build for this repo, the, the CI builds, would take 15 minutes building all these different projects. I just got super sick of it. I thought, quick prototype. I make a little PHP script that just calls git, gets the change list, and then only builds the um, projects that have actually changed, which cut the build from like 15 minutes to two minutes. And I was like, quick prototype saves so much developer time, just sitting there waiting for like 10 minutes for a CI build finish. Anybody got any interesting prototyping stories they want to share? Are those some things? No? Any getting started with PHP tips that you want to share with anybody who's very new to PHP? Laracasts. Laracasts. Here's a good show. Do you want to fill people in a little bit more about it? Okay. Why not? Yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of facilitating a wider conversation rather than the only person with oh, I'm not actually sure if there's really good starting. I think Laracast does actually have some beginner PHP talks, but Jeffrey Way, who's the main guy who owns Laracast has done a lot of kind of beginning PHP. So if you're looking for 
really good video courses on how to start learning PHP. Check out Jeff Ruway and Laura Cuss. Yeah, Matt Tuts as well. Um, Net Tuts. Hmm. Yeah, look, in terms of Laravel development and things like that, I have to say that these days, most of the time when I do want something uh, a little bit more than the stuff we've been looking at here, then quite often Laravel will be the framework that I end up going to just because it's so quick and easy to get up and running with. And particularly now as well, that they're shipping it with Vue.js, you know, the front end that way. But I know there's other folks as well who like using Symfony to get started with and Silex and things like that. It works in Symfony Well, yeah, yeah. And so, so from that point of view, what's what's your favorite tool of choice for getting started with a new product, uh, project or idea? Laravel. Hey, Laravel. <laughs> It, it comes up a lot because it is very, it's just insanely easy to get started. But yeah, like, uh, you mentioned the, the Laracast, the Jeff Hoy does, and there's a lot of good stuff in there. I know, I, I haven't spent a lot of time going through it, but I've recommended it to other people just on the basis that, you know, there seems to be a lot of... And a lot of it's free as well. Like some of it costs money, but there's a lot of good free content there as well. Yeah. Good on. All right. Well, look, from the point of view of the, the projects that we've had, has anybody got any questions they want to ask? Does anybody want to see any more of the code or anything like that? Or ask any questions? Do you see how this train app works? What's that mean? Can we see this train app working? Oh, you know what? That's a great question. Let me see if I can uh, share my Wi Fi connection from the phone and then I'll do that. That's oh, amazing. Oh, magic. How wonderful. All right. Now, the thing is, it's great because all this time you will be building up in your head, this must look amazing. This must be the most beautiful application I've ever seen in my life. I can't wait to see it. Well, the, the truth of that is, no, it's not the most beautiful application in the world. And of course, I was just having a couple of fun with it. But what I'll do is I will come in here in PHP Storm here for anybody who's not familiar with it. You've got this integrated terminal, and what I'm going to do is just in this uh, train. You can see there's the file here, train server underscore from city, because I was being really lazy with the way that I named things. And I'm going to take a moment and have a look at my code again for a second to see what URL I was actually calling when talking to my proxy endpoints. So what were we doing? We were up here, and we have. The methods calling out, what have we got? URLs to city, URLs to city, and there we go. Okay, so the URL to city was on this port. So I can say PHP dash capital S, and then I'm going to say localhost, and I'm going to put that one on 9191 because that's what I had it in, in my code. And what next? Of course, the file that I want to actually have it run. So it's going to be, that's the to city. So we've got the train server to city. All right. So that one now should be running on 9191. And then the other one will be on 9292, because I was feeling really original when I did that. It's a PHP What's that mean? You know what? That's a, a nice idea. Yeah. Oh, okay. No worries. Well, thanks a lot for coming and appreciate the talk too. Uh, I think that the the train application will be all the better. Thank you. Oh, you know what? We'd love. Would we, we, we like to hear about maps? Yeah. Absolutely. That's a big hell yes. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, wonderful. Well, in that case, then is is next month too soon? Maybe the month after. Yeah. You know. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Good to see you. All the best. Cheers. 
So I'm going to go here again, localhost. <coughs> so I'm using the inbuilt web server in PHP to serve this stuff up off the relevant ports. So I'm going to say train server from city for this one. And then I'm going to go into the application which I've built here, and I should be able to just say npm run dev because you know, that's what we like. Okay, it's starting to do things, and once it's done things, then I'll be able to click on the link or at least paste it into the browser, and then you know you'll say we waited for that. Really? Well, thank you for that time. I'll never get that time back. Here we go. All right. So here it is. Okay, so you're probably getting a bit of an idea about where it is that we're we're staying. But there it is. So I can see which is the next train that's coming, what time is it due, what's the actual name of the train, the service, and you know what's what platforms are going to come in. So it's basic stuff and what's happening behind the scenes is it's occasionally going back and saying, Hey, is there any fresh data? Is there any fresh data? Yeah, that's right. There's probably ways we can make that better. But since this is not a highly scalable application, let's face it, it's really just for me. I'm okay with that. That's, you know, is it time to take it to the next level? Probably not yet. We'll give it a bit of time. And I didn't want to say it, but, you know, I did start having goat maps, but that's... Uh, <laughs> okay, it's completely inaccurate. It's, it's, I, I don't even know if they know what that data is, but I took it from the API responses. I thought it was, hey, maybe this is the location this train has been in for the last six weeks, but no, no, it's just random dots that appear to be somewhere near the tracks. <laughs> And we can't distinguish which train it belongs to. So, thank you for inquiring. That's the app. It's really, really useful when you're trying to work out what the hell that noise is outside the window. Um, <laughs> you kind of, you kind of have got a couple of options. It's either a train or a train. So it's not really much of a surprise. But anyway, at least we know which platform it was arriving at. North Shore problems. <laughs> exactly, North Shore life. I need some tattoos or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so any any further inspiration that may have, like a flash of lightning, there's a lead there, come into your mind that may wish, may you wish to get up and give a lightning talk? Hmm? Adam. <laughs> Sorry? What? Sorry. I could have sworn. Me, said Adam. <laughs> Oh. But it's not any language specific. Non-language specific lightning talks? <gasps> yeah. Is anybody interested? I'm interested. Hey. Free. Okay. We're interested, Ollie. Thanks for that. Come on up, Sue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Thank you for summing up. It's so beautiful. Thank you, folks. Cheers. <laughs>